let's go back to calculus and talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you recall, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the integral from a to b of df dx, integrated over dx, is just the value of the function f at b minus the value of the function f at a. One way of thinking about this is that it's the integral of a derivative, and that must be equal to the value of the function on the boundary. And in this case, the uh, boundary of the region that we're interested in, well, we're integrating over some segment of the real line, and the boundary are the endpoints, A and B. So that's what we mean by boundary here. Well, so we can rewrite this in three dimensions, a fundamental theorem of calculus for three dimensions, using three-dimensional derivatives instead of just these 1D derivatives. So we could write this as the integral over a volume of the gradient of some vector field v, d tau, and that must be equal to the closed surface integral of the vector v dotted with dA. So in pictures, what we mean here is we have some volume v here, and it's enclosed by some closed surface, s. Uh, note that the boundary of a volume is a surface. And so there's a sense in which we're still doing the fundamental theorem of calculus here. The integral of a derivative, namely uh, the derivative of v, is equal to the value of that function v on the boundary, namely over the surface. So this has several different names, depending on who you talk to. This could be called the divergence theorem, kind of naturally, because you're taking the integral of a divergence. Um, sometimes it's called Green's theorem. And then with a physics context, you might call it Gauss's theorem. We're going to stick more with the divergence theorem, but any three of these terms would work. Note that in this expression, um, so this operator here is called the gradient operator. And it's just as we are used to defining it. So the gradient operator is equal to the partial with respect to x in the x direction, and so forth in the y and the z directions. Uh, this is true so that if you take the, this dotted with v, the vector field, you get a divergence. And so this del dot v, or gradient dotted with v, gives you d by dx of the x component of v, d by dy of the y component, plus d by dz of the z component. And notice this is a scalar. This is just a number, not a vector anymore. So the divergence theorem has a nice geometric interpretation uh, that you can think of for why it must be true. So let's rewrite the divergence theorem, which is that the integral over a volume of the divergence of v is equal to the closed surface integral of v dot dA. So the geometric interpretation here is we would say that the sum of the sources of a fluid um, or the sinks of a fluid, for instance, in some region V, must be equal to the flow in or out through the closed surface of that region. That's one way of thinking about what this means. So now what I want to do is I want to apply this to Gauss's law, because Gauss's law has this form of a closed integral of E dot dA. So let's see what we can do with this. So we have the closed integral of e dot dA, and by Gauss's law, that must be equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So let's use the divergence theorem on this left-hand side of Gauss's law to turn this closed surface integral into an integral over the volume of the divergence of e, integral dt. Well, the right-hand side, q enclosed over epsilon naught, just by what we mean by physics, by Q enclosed, this is 1 over epsilon naught, the integral of rho, the volume charge, d tau. So these two sides must still be equal to each other. Maybe I'll rewrite this and pull the epsilon naught inside here. So I have the divergence of E over some volume, d tau. And that must be equal to rho over epsilon naught, integral over d tau. And this must be true for any volume. So if this is true for any particular volume that I choose, the in things inside of the integral must also be equal. So I must have the divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon naught. Now this is called Gauss's law, 
But in particular, it's called Gauss's law in differential form, because we have derivatives in here. Uh, and that's to be contrasted with Gauss's law as we learned it before, namely Gauss's law in integral form with the surface integral of e dot dA. So both of these are Gauss's law, it's the same content, same information, just rewritten in different ways. And they'll be useful in different contexts, as we'll use throughout the course.